Oi, Bernardo, acho que agora. كما قلت إخواني أطباء الأسنان العراقيين سعيد بلقياكم بهذا الويب بنار هذا المساء وأشكر جزيل الشكر الأخ والصديق الغالي الأستاذ حسين الحويزي لكل اللي شرف شرف معرفته كان الحمد لله تشرفت بأن برئاسة المؤتمر السادس لعلاج الطب العلاج جذور الأسنان بمدينة مراكش وكان شرف كبير بأن التقيت بجميع بزاف الأصدقاء ومن بينهم الأخ حسين الحويزي اللي لقيت فيه إنسان ذو القلب الكبير إنسان طيب البشوش وكان ظن بأن العلاقة ماشي من نظرة الأولى كانت علاقة أخوة الحمد لله بإذن الله الحمد لله بإذن الله كان ظن كان ظن بأن لغة اللغة حتى تعم الفائدة كيف قال الأخ حسين الحويزي المحاضرة ديالي غتكون حول فلسفة علاج جذور الأسنان من ناحية البريبوريشن ما بين الحاضر والمستقبل وحتى تعم الفائدة غادي نقوم بالمحاضرة باللغة الإجليزية بإذن الله You can start when ready. Yeah, thank you so much. Just I share my screen. Nice. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Very thank you. Good. Very thank good. you. Uh, I see I see the opportunity. I see the opportunity to show you the, the pictures and this is the opportunity to say that during the, the our pan Arab Ondonotic conference, I have the chance and the opportunity to meet my great friend and brother, Hussein Hawazi, uh, a great person with a good heart. Uh, I'm glad to have us as a friend. And by the way, my greeting to my colleagues from the Arab Ondonotic Society. The sixth fall root canal treatment is based on establishing a precise diagnosis and developing a convenient treatment plan, applying knowledge of tooth canal, tooth anatomy, and morphology, and performing the debris and disinfection and alteration the entire of the root canal system. No one can understand the present if he's done know the history and if he doesn't respect this history. We are on the development of our dentistry to uh, Pierre Fouchard, the father of the modern dentistry. He's widely now to writing the first complete scientific description of dentistry, the Chirurgien Dentist published in uh, 1728. And the Professor Schilder, in 1974, the father of the modern endodontic, clarified our endodontic therapy. And he said that the most important goal of endodontic therapy is to eliminate bacteria flora and protein degradation. And to maintain this result over time by a total obturation of the root canal space. Many thanks to these uh, two great practitioners. With them, we have a clear way to do our practice with scientific reflection. The major goal of endodontic therapy are the prevention of periapical disease, promotion to healing in cases where disease exists by three steps, which are cleaning, shaping, and obturation. As we all know that microorganisms are the major cause in the pathogenesis of pulp and periapical disease. As I said, the main aim of endodontic therapy is to disinfect the root canal system in total by an elimination of microorganisms and microbial components and prevention of the reinfection during and after treatment. And this goal is pursued by chemomechanical debridement shaping and cleaning. The principle of shaping is, is to facilitate cleaning 
the principle of shaping is to facilitate cleaning and provide space of uh, placing obturating material in order to maintain this result of disinfection on time. By giving a taper of the canal, we make, we make it easier of the orthodontic syringe to access and deliver our irrigant in the apical area. Without this taper, uh, there, there is no space to create a hydrodynamic irrigating solution. To clean and shape the analytic space, we need to have a landmark. The stop we need to respect in our therapy in order to respect the apical region, the periapix. In this apical region, we have different elements the cemento dentinal direction, the apical constriction, the foramina, and the vertex. What is the cemento dentinal direction? It is the histological limit between the canal space and the apical region. Uh, and it is represent, in fact, our limits and landmarks while shaping and cleaning. But clinically, this region can't be, can't be identified. The apical construction is the narrowest part on the canal. The foramina is where the canal opens and connects with the apical region. The vertex is the projection of the anatomical apex on radiographs. Thank you, Kittler. Thanks to Kittler studies, it was demonstrated that this cemented dentinal direction correspond to the apical construction. But in some clinical cases or situation, we can't have this construction, either if it was not formed in matter teeth, or it was distracted by inflammation. In this case, we can consider the foramina as our limit. In this table, we can see the location of these landmarks according to the vertex. When the diagnosis show only pulp disease, without periapical pathosis. The constriction is considered our limit and its value is different from a two to other. But when this constriction is distracted by periapical pathosis, the foramina can be taken as our landmark. But how can to determine the apical construction? Using electronic apical locators, are very useful to locate these landmarks with the high precision. And currently, the new generation of these devices can determine this position with up to uh, nine, 96% accuracy. But can we count only on the electronic apex locator without radiographs? This is the question. And the answer is no. Why? Because the orthodontic anatomy is complex and even more in the apical region. As we can see different topographies of the apical canal disconstruction, the simple position we can take in off or present in only in two types, A and B. And, but in 24% of cases, the constriction position, it's more complex. That's why you use the apical locator by itself, it's not conclusive. So in order to have a precise location of the hour construction using Apex locator, along with the radiographs, is necessary. Is it largely recommended in the whole literature? Our endodontic therapy is a surgical procedure, and we need magnification, such as loops and microscope to ensure a precise and high quality of our endodontic practice. I recommend you to start by using loops with magnification ranging from uh, 2.5 to 3.5. It's enough to the most endodontic procedure. If you can afford microscope, it will be great with that excellent quality in our practice. After establishing our working lengths, as I said, and all the literature said, the aim of the our endodontic therapy is to disinfect. And the use of endodontic syringe with correct leading permit to the region to reach the apical third 
of the canal, it has been has be clarified a long time ago. It's clear that a small needle can penetrate more in the canal. But this simplified configuration, when we say canal, it's largely out of date. Actually, we're talking about the endodontic systems as an entity with anatomy complexity. And this anatomy complexity of the canal and specifically the apical area has made of irrigant a challenging task. As the irrigation solution doesn't always reach all the area of tubular systems. The disinfection of the root canal and its uh, three dimensional tubular networks was always the fundamental aim of endodontic therapy. We should know that once the bacteria infect the pulp tissue has commenced, bacteria uh, also penetrate into the deeper uh, layer of the root canal and propagate a perical inflammation. That's why a three-dimensional disinfection is necessary in order to obtain a satisfied outcome to achieve this irrigant activation has showed great results. A quick word on irrigant solution, because we don't have enough time to describe all irrigant solution, sodium hypochlorite. Sodium hypochlorite is still the most popular irrigant solution. It is commonly used in concentration between 2.5% and 5.25%. Sodium hypochlorite is now for its antibacterial properties and removal of the organic tissue. It is an excellent antibacterial agent. It also effectively dissolves pulp remnants and collagen, the main organic component of dentin. In addition of sodium hypochlorite to the sodium hypochlorite, the use of EDTA, it is common practice in endodontic treatment to remove the inorganic component or smear layer left uh, in the canal during root canal treatment. The effectiveness of the sodium hypochlorite depends on many parameters. The concentration, temperature, pH of the solution, and contact. As I said, the activation of this irrigant has showed great results. Various activation techniques has been developed sonic, ultrasonic systems. And uh, from my opinion, sonic devices generate bubbles that help in removing the endodontic debris and mass, including bacteria, feeding materia and smear laying, creating a hydrodynamic motion. And uh, on the other hand, using ultrasonic activators generate micro bubbles. Uh, these micro bubbles are uh, like micro explosion. Uh, what about chlorhexidine? Chlorhexidine has been considered for a long time as a substitute of sodium hypochlorite in allergic situation. The big advantage of this solution is biocompatibility. We know that. But the big disadvantage is the non ability to solve the organic cell tissue. Currently, chloroxidine can be used as a complementary irrigation agent to the sodium hypochlorite. And we must be careful to dry the canal between treatment to avoid any interaction between sodium hypochlorite and chloroxidine. After mechanical preparation, smear layer is formed on the root canal wall. This uh, thin layer reduced the contact between the irrigant and bacteria hiding in the dentin. That's why it is important to remove this smear layer to achieve a satisfying result of disinfection by allowing direct contact of the irrigation solution with the root canal wall. And to do that, the use of EDTA at 70% for three minutes is widely recommended by several studies. We can also use in uh, citric acid. It has uh, the same, same effect with same result. 
So what recommended to remove the organic and inorganic components and final irrigation sequence with gelatin agent and sodium hypochlorite. Now moving on the, the shaping and the question, uh, how can I shape my canal? How I can shape my canal safety? The philosophy of shaping is based on two concepts. The first one consists of initial uh, apical preparation. In this, uh, it's the step back technique when the practitioner wants only to reach the apex and prepare all the canal, starting by the apex and going up. And the second concept, it's the step down technique. We start by initial coronal preparation in order to eliminate all coronal interference and to give, an, give a passive access to our instruments to reach apic cohesion. And the third concept, which is the hybrid technique, is just a combination of uh, the step technique, a step back technique, and step down technique. The step back technique is in fact an evolution of the standard technique proposed by Engel in 1961. Uh, in this period, we had just tell steel uh, files. We must know that uh, it was a big step on Odontic to have various stainless steel files with different design and manipulation and procedure, like uh, files. Flex R, H5, which different section given to each an instrument, to each instrument, a cutting efficacy with flexibility, but uh, don't forget it is just a still steel file, it's still rigid. This technique is based on initial apical preparation, where the practitioner had one aim and one vision to arrive to, arrive to apical vision as the only objective. And this, 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 uh, this way. And the question we use it to ask ourselves and to our colleague is, did you arrive to the apex? This was the only concept, arrive to apex. The protocol of the standard technique consists to use two types of files, K file and H file. The first one to explore, and the second one to prepare the vertical, uh, to prepare the portion with the vertical translation motion. And when the K file 25 arrive to the apex, the shaping is considered finished and the obturation can be started. But this technique, but this technique gave us a narrow canal with a type of approximately 2%, similar to the instrument used in this protocol. A rigid instrument in the in the a thin space, we're talking uh, here about uh, key file and H5, using in this technique caused more often canal transportation with the stripping, intra and extra stripping, causing a no respect of the teeth, a no respect of apical region. This less flexibility of the instrument make it incapable to negotiate the apical third with safety. And we know that region has, uh, has a complex anatomy. And these figures, we can see that when we force our instrument to reach apex, we can create leads and apical destruction. In, uh, in, uh, in 1972, Wine proposed to give more taper to our preparation with step back technique. What's the step back technique? Let's know that uh, in 1972, we still had only isophile with 2% conicity and the objective how to make our canal more conical 
with this instrument. When the procedure to explore the apex where the standard techniques is done, and uh, the key file 25 arrive to the working legs, we start the step back technique by using instrument with large diameters, introducing and preparing with uh, 13, uh, 30 key file at working lengths uh, minus one millimeter, millimeter and uh, 13, 35 at working lengths minus two millimeter and uh, so on, we can prepare all the canal and give in a good conical preparation. But, but this procedure will give to our canal a large taper needed uh, for a good cleaning and filling and the risk to fractures and canal transportation it's less. Excuse me. Uh, just yes, the time needed it was associate the standard at step by technique and the more time consummate and the complication is still present and the non complexity. I have just said this. To compass for this, the step down technique was first suggested by Schilder in 1974. The main principle of this technique is to prepare and clean the coronal part of the root canal before the apical part. By coronal flyering with uh, gate uh, gliding uh, burst, in order to give our instrument a free access to the apical turn. And when the instrument is free, it can reach the apical with flexibility. Uh, these coronal to apical approaches are a step by step widening of the root canal from the crown uh, down to the apical segment, such as technique consists of a progressive preparation and disinfection. We use uh, 10 key file, uh, 50 key file, and 20 in the coronal apical third, using large file and the middle third, and even large to prepare the apical third. Now the same principle is following in the crown down technique. It is a crown down pressure list preparation uh, which involve early coronal filling by uh, gate uh, gliding bird, followed by removal and dented from the coronal to apical direction. Key file are used here in the larger to small sequence with a remaining motion and no apical pressure. Uh, by that we, we obtain round file on using, uh, using this instrument with less, less pressure. But also this technique, it's time consuming. It takes more time to use in all files to prepare the car. In order to improve the cutting efficacy and respect the rigidity of stainless steel instrument, or one, a 1985 proposed the balanced four technique. This is technically reduced the canal transportation, instrument separation, leach, less extrusion of debris at the apical foramen. The preparation of the coronal two third of the canal, it's always done when the gate born, when the cap file of flexi R is used for the preparation of the apical third. With a specific sequence, first we place the file with the slight apical pressure, and the same time we're rotating the file at uh, 90 degrees clockwise in order to engage in the dancing. Then a rotation counterclockwise at uh, 270 degrees will ensure cutting. The second time to engage the first time to engage and the second time to 
cut all that with light apical pressure to enlarge and shape the canal to diameter of the instrument. The, press, the process is repeated, that is clockwise rotation at 90 degrees. Then again, counter clockwise cutting. At this point, as the instrument advanced to the apex, we rotate the instrument in a clockwise motion, 360 degrees, and the instrument can be removed and clean it after. The canal is prepared step by step, increasing the length by one to two millimeters into the working length it reached, uh, and by increasing the size of file. When the given the canal a tape, when you're given a canal a tape, when you're given uh, a stage cleaning and fitting procedure. This technique was interesting in the way that reduced uh, the preparation complication, permit to reach the apical area safely. But it's, uh, it was still a long procedure. So a new system was introduced, which helped in time saving and reduced the time of shaping. It was the using of nickel titanium files. Their, this rotary instrument added an interesting value. More than that, these uh, files are now for uh, the, their uh, high flexibility, high uh, fracture resistance, and the high taper. Used with a crown down technique, they allowed a better shape and taper to the canal for the better distribution of origin solution up and to the apical region. Certainly, these instruments give to our orthodontic therapy a safe way with the less friction and stress. A better access of instruments and irrigants, but we must be careful about the risk of extrusion of debris uh, beyond the apex. The reciprocating motion reduces this risk. I hope to discuss this point with you in another opportunity. A canal, it's like a cave. It's not a highway. A rigorous shaping strategy, state by state, should be followed. Our uh, shaping strategy should always respect the objective and principle of cleaning and shaping described by our father of modern, modern odontics, Professor, Pierre Schild uh, Professor Schilder. And to proceed with this strategy, we should start with preparing correctly our access cavity because it conditions greatly the success on our therapy. A correct access cavity with no interference will uh, allow a good access to the canal, a good insertion of the files does prevent any complication. Always pay attention to the nice uh, continuity of all uh, space, all space of uh, access cavity and corona interface. Uh, in this uh, level, we don't have interference to block instrument to progress passively and safety in the canal. And uh, this and this situation will reduce the risk of instrument separation. You have to prepare your access cavity in minimal invasive way, visual aids, loops, and microscope along with ultrasonic tips. It's very, very, very useful to respect the concept of minimally invasive endodontic. Even with the use of nickel titanium instruments, stainless steel are always necessary to explore passively our endodontic page. Each file family, we have a mission to accomplish. Stainless steel file, and more specifically the key file, 
are the explorer. And without pressure, they guide and secure the passage, passage of nickel titanium. Uh, they show to rotary file where they can shape safely. In order to achieve this great result, nickel titanium greatly help, but can do it without key file. We have the nickel titanium, yes, I know, but we must have the key file to explore this space. And to do that, with the great respect of orthodontic procedure, we should follow the same rules. Passive and aseptic instrumentation, precurved stainless steel file, copious irrigation, and the most important rule with nickel titanium instrument is to engage our nickel titanium instrument either by the taper or the tip, never both of, of the, 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 the same time. We'll uh, discuss this point in the protocol. We all agree now that the crown down technique is the safest. It is largely recommended in the literature and will prepare the canal and three time, coronal, middle, and apical time. The nickel, nickel titanium instrument used in the coronal and the middle third must have a high conicity and a thin diameter of the point. The first one we would need it to prepare the first third, the coronal third, or the middle third, need to have a high conicity and a thin diameter of points. Why? In this type, our instrument work with, with conicity. And we can see that when we observe the instrument after cutting, the debris should be located in the body of the instrument. Never, never at this stage to have debris and the points. In this stage, the point of the instrument is just a guide. In this stage, the, the instrument working by the body, by the conicity, never by the points. The point is just a guide. In the apical third, our philosophy changed. We must choose instrument with the low conicity and a diameter of the point uh, equal to the apical construction. And the same control, the same observation. The debris in this stage should be in the apical part of the instrument. If the debris come in the body of the instrument, the coronal and the middle time wasn't completed. It should be reshaped again. To sum up, I propose to use the, you, your instrument and the coronal and the middle third with the point inferior of or equal to 0.20 millimeter and a conicity superior to 6%. Whereas the apical third, we need uh, instrument with uh, a point superior or equal, equal, uh, to uh, 0. Uh, 0. 0.20 millimeter, millimeter and the conicity inferior or equal to 6%. This is a reflection about instrument with a constant conicity. I don't talking about a proper, proper uh, protaper system will have a various conicity. Just, just with reflection about instrument without uh, with, with the constant policy. Actually, in order to preserve dental wall, recent study proposed to prepare our canal at 4%. Personally, I like this reflection, but 4% must be reserved to initial endodontic therapy with inflammatory pulp disease without infection. Uh, and for and fixtures cases, we have give 6% taper to the canal in order to give a large access to irrigant solution. 
We need more disinfection. We need to space to, 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 to space to give access to needle to uh, irrigant solution. We should now that root canal, the, that the root canal does not always have round section. And in uh, oval cross section cases, we have two bed to, ha to, have, uh, to have two bed uh, to, to options. I, I talk about the round file. Either use the small diameter of the, the oval canal or the large, largest one. For the first option, using a small diameter, the shape it's, it's, it's not enough. For the second option, using the largest one, it is so weakening, there are two bad options. What the solution? The solution come with the new generation of instrument. This is the reason why we should use instrument with another philosophy. Adaptative instrument allowing a three-dimensional shaping, like XP shaper from uh, FKG or uh, self-adjacent file from Rendatanova. Redantanova. The self-adjacent file, you can see the video. I, I like I like very much I like very much that this instrument. It's a very interesting concept. It's instrument. It's a gentle gentle instrument. It's adapt to the shape of the canal and ensure a continuous irrigation. And uh, uh, have another example. The XP shaper has two faces uh, in phase in phase uh, at uh, twenty degrees where the file is thin. At the A phase with the, at 35 degrees, degrees where the, the instrument is large, like a snake. And this video, this video and you can see of uh, this design on the cleaning and curving wall. Uh, Conversely, the round file, uh, round file that take a direct way in the car. The use uh, the working lengths. We can see the efficacy of this instrument in this in this area. Uh, the motion of this magnificent file, like a density, okay. a low bit uh, remaining of the radical tubular. It's a, 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 a it's instrument. Yes, a slow motion. We can see the impact and the area, the context, it's, it's less, and we have less to, uh, risk of fractures, and the shaping is three-dimensional with this motion. It's true that our practice has changed through time with the use of rotary instruments, making us save more time but 
understanding more the biologic concept and the difficulty of endodontic disinfection this time saved and shaping should be added in our final irrigation the disinfection is just a part of our endodontic therapy we must start with an access cavity respecting a minimal invasive concept Followed by canal shaping with the respect of the mechanical rules of shaping, a copious irrigation after each instrument. One milliliter of sodium hypochlorite after each instrument is recommended. When the canal is prepared and the needle can reach the apiculture, please, 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 it's time to irrigate irrigate abundantly this is the objective of our endodontic track it's to facilitate the access for the irrigant agent why uh, we follow that by uh, edta agent or uh, citric acid in order to remove the smear layer and to expose bacteria hiding in the tubula to enhance the contact of the our keratin agents with dentin wall, uh, we use manual or sonic agitation in order to, to make it reach all area. After that, we finish it with our famous irrigant, the sodium hypochlorite activate by heat or ultrasonic activation. In a clinical situation, uh, when we need more antibacterial effect like fistula and periapical disease, we can use chloroxidine at 2% as an anti-appointment uh, medication. If you follow this protocol, will we achieve anti-recine results of disinfection and we need, need to maintain this result by endo, uh, endodontic and coronal sealing. With this simplify protocol, we can ensure a three-dimensional clinic, cleaning and shipping of the root canal. Uh, my lecture has come to end. Thank you for your attention and for your presence. Morocco and Iraq are two very old countries proud of uh, their history and culture to share in knowledge. This picture is uh, from al Qarawin University in Fez, where the oldness, uh, oldness medical degrees have delivered. Thank you again for your attention. Thank you for, uh, for you, their friend, their brother, Hussein, uh, for this invitation. Thank you, Iraqi Endodontic Society, for this invitation. I had the pleasure to be present with you today. And uh, I seize the opportunity to present my deep thanks to my mentor, Professor Pierre Mastou, for all his, uh, he has given to me personally and to dentistry and the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Saeed. You reminded me of uh, Professor uh, Pierre Mastou. I, still, uh, I, I myself was, uh, I, uh, he taught me quite a lot, quite a lot. I, I mm. am honored to, uh, to uh, have entered three of his uh, uh, hands-on courses uh, mm. where I learned, he taught me quite a lot about uh, in, uh, Pro Taper Universal, mm. and then we went to Pro Taper Next at that time. Uh, uh, I thank you very much for this very interesting uh, lecture. And uh, really, after uh, every interesting lecture, there are questions. Uh, and uh, these Welcome. questions are, uh, and the, uh, the audience want to uh, hear from your expertise. Uh, one you. question is that, uh, uh, can we uh, activate uh, ultrasonically, EDTA? Um, EDTA is a soft, a soft acid. We don't need to activate EDTA. EDTA need 
to have the contact with the surface. We need to help them to have this contact. We can do it with the manual agitation just to, 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 to give him the, the possibility to have the contact or, or uh, using the sonic devices. Ultrasonic not, that doesn't have the efficacy. With, it's like using acid with, the, with etching, with etching for, for composites. It's, if you need, you need to activate the, the acid, no. We need just to use it to, to, to push them to have a, gr a great surface. To, uh, I think with EDTA, we need just to uh, manual agitation or sonic agitation without activation. The most important, the most important point, it's three minutes. The time, it's very important. We need to have three minutes for your uh, keratin agent to have a, a, a great efficacy to eliminate uh, and disintegrate the smear layer. And after we can use your irrigant agent to, uh, to, 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 uh, to eliminate all smear layer. And after we can have the contact with the bacteria hiding in the dental space. Oh, but, uh, uh, I uh, uh, doctor, I, uh, I totally agree with you. It's just like an acid that you have to place the material uh, for surface uh, interaction. Uh, and, uh, maybe we can uh, do some kind of uh, uh, agitation, maybe with a with a gutta percha uh, and yeah. rubbing the surface uh, mm -hmm. to to enhance the entrance of the EDTA uh, and for better. Uh, touching uh, uh, the the wall, but it has to be uh, in contact with the with the wall. In cases of retreatment, do you use sodium hypochlorite or chlorhexidine uh, for uh, irrigation? Or uh, it's not there isn't any uh, concern, and you can do any one of them. Uh, yeah. To be clear in this point, it's very important to say that the sodium hypochlorite, it's the best irrigant. It's the most interesting product we can use in anonautic. When, when we increase the concentration, we increase the risk. It's a medicant, it's a drug, and we have the toxicity with the sodium hypochlorite. When using a 2%, we have the last risk, and we'll have the great percent and the higher percent, like 5.25%, we can use this concentration in the cases or treatment. We have the affection, we have the apical disease. The chloroxidine uh, can use it in like uh, an anti appointment We can use it like intramedical, intracanal medication between stations. If you have uh, infection using a great concentration, like 5.25%, and after we can dry the canal and we can make the chloroxidine into the canal and we can close your uh, cav accessity and the, uh, the, the, the chloroxidine have the efficacy and the long time enter with, with between the session we can uh, use in your treatment. Uh, a question, how about pre-curving uh, rotary nickel titanium files? Are you with such a thing? Are there advantages in such a procedure? Uh, yeah, uh, pre-curve the nickel titanium, it is, it is now possible with the, the oldness generation, the first generation, the nickel titanium, it's impossible to pre-curve. But the last one, the new generation, we can prove it. I think this, opportunity facilitate access for the canal. When working uh, uh, molar, we don't have the access directly and we can precurve the point of this instrument to have the access and the mesal canal and the, the, uh, the, the part with the access is difficult. It's very interesting to access to the canal. But, uh, I think it's not, it's not efficacious, efficacious in the canal. Yeah. For a better irrigation, which is the best taper 
so that we can in, uh, ensure that the irrigant reaches the apical region. We have two philosophies. We have two philosophy. The first one, when we're talking about uh, the, the, the instrument with constant conicity, and uh, this in this situation, when we have a pulp disease without inflammation in the therapy apical region, we can just use in 4%. 30% with the needle adapted uh, to reach this apical region, we can use. But when you have a retreatment, when you have a periapical disease, we must give in a big tipple. A big tipple, it's not a, a big, big, big is 6%. 6% can give access, a free access to needle to reach apical area. And uh, when we're talking about another philosophy like protaper, protaper, it's not uh, an instrument with a constant, constant conicity. The apical region present conicity 7%, 8%. And we can conclude that when we use the instrument, like this instrument, FKG instrument, uh, uh, I think uh, about all instruments, fixed, uh, standard, or conic CT, 6% given us more, uh, uh, more efficacy of irrigation. And taper using F1 or F2, we have a conic CT like 7%. It's very interesting to reach this apical region. Really, uh, I totally agree with you. I, uh, a couple of years ago, I made a research myself whereby I used the traditional, you know, the, st the step back technique and found that initially to, to get a good uh, irrigation, irrigant material to enter the epical region for the step back technique, uh, we hmm. needed a, a D0 of no less than 30 to 35. Mm -hmm. But now with the rotaries, as you stated, and I totally agree with what you mm -hmm. have stated, it's not the uh, the the shape or the D0, it's the taper. So if you mm -hmm. make a 6% taper in the epical region, you're bound to have a good uh, irrigation, but on one condition is that uh, sometimes you get what we call the vapor lock. Uh, mm -hmm. so sometimes I, I, I bring uh, a K-type file or something and, oh, sorry, uh, electricity has gone off. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, um, and we introduce the, the, this file to remove this vapor lock. Uh, at the end, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, it came back again. Thank you. Uh, thank God. Um, um, at the end of, the, of this very interesting lecture, I am very happy to, to uh, have uh, 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 with me one of my uh, friends and brothers, uh, 